Hi there. That was delicious, wasn't it? I can feel my salivary glands kicking in. Um, just so much beautiful breakfast art. I mean, what could be better than breakfast art? There should be entire museums devoted to the art of breakfast. I mean, there's no question about it. There could be entire wings devoted to drawing toast or ha another special exhibit on the history of bacon and sausages and other pork products on the plate. I think it's high time that we started to, to get to work on that. I'm going to set up a GoFundMe to, uh, to build the first art of breakfast um, museum. I think, it's, I think we need it. So, yes, that was a lot of beautiful art. I don't know if you noticed, there was one that was really incredible that was made out of, like, collage, tile, something or other. That was really exceptional. Was, I, don't know, I forget who made that, but it was really beautiful. So they're called restaurants, says Arlene. No. No, I'm talking about the art of breakfast, not just the food itself, although that's pretty good, too. Ah, yes, anyway, I'm Danny Gregory. This is The Breakfast Show. No, this is <laughs> Draw With Me. It's Thursday. The leaf spreaders, leaf spreaders, the leaf, they may be spreading leaves. I think they've gone, the leaf blowers. But uh, we have house guests here right now in the Gregory Mansion. We have my sister Miranda visiting with her husband Chris and my niece Maggie. They're all visiting here from frigid New York. And um, it's just nice to see them. It's nice to have them here, first timers to Phoenix. And um, so, yes, so they're here. They're lounging in the other room, eating breakfast as it happens. And I'm here with you, getting ready for another edition of Draw With Me. So, Here's what I want you to, to think about as our topic for today. Um, I want to focus myself, at least, on just drawing for the fun of it, the meditative, therapeutic, relaxing aspect of it. So no, no hard judgments today. No assessing of whether or not you're any good or whether you did it right or whether it looks like the thing. We're not doing that today. Instead, we're just going to have a nice relaxing time. Now, ideally, you come to every draw with me with that attitude. But I know it's not always possible. I know I don't always have that attitude. I know that I often am sitting here quietly berating myself for my ineptitude throughout the, the whole show. Not today. Today is going to be, today I'm going to congratulate myself on my Zen state, my peace of mind. So I hope you're going to join me in that. Here's what I want to draw today. I want to draw some clutter. Um, I, I sort of scattered a bunch of um, art supplies here on my desk, and uh, I just want to kind of So yeah, so that's it. So I'm sorry, <laughs> I didn't have my mic on when I was showing you this. So this is this is just kind of a bunch of clutter on my desk, some art supplies, and um, I'm just arranging them here and trying to sort of make them look vaguely appealing. Um, I wanted to just have an arrangement of just stuff. So you might want to do the same thing with me and do um, just grab some stuff. Whatever it is you want to do, just have a little pile of things. The idea is to have a pile that 
you know, nobody wants a great drawing of a bunch of clutter. That's not the point of this. The point is, is to have some stuff to look at and focus on it and just use that as our subject. Our goal right now is just to enjoy ourselves, to just move the pen around. And I'm also going to, I think I'm going to be like reaching into my pile of clutter to just pull out, you know, material. I'm going to use a little bit of ink and then I'm going to use a, use some pens and use a colored pencil and do that kind of thing. So that's sort of the idea is how can we um, just be and play and try different stuff out. Okay. Are you with me? Do you have some clutter? Would you rather use my clutter? Well, I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you my clutter in a minute. We'll come back to it and I'll put that up on the screen so you can draw my clutter if you don't want to draw your own. It doesn't really matter. Okay, um, so today uh, we are going to be using this, which is the Hanamula Bamboo Mixed Media Pad. And uh, it, is, it is really nice paper. It's, um, well, you can't really tell on camera here, but as, as it says here, it is suited for, you know, watercolor, acrylic, pastel. It's mixed media. So anything you want to use, anything basically you can throw at it, it's fine. Um, and as it says here, um, bamboo mixed media eignet sich auf Gründen, auf Grund seiner einzigartigen Oberfläche sehr gut vor verschiedenen Mal- und Zeichentechniken, wie Aquarell, Acryl und Pastel, sorry vor Mischtechniken. No idea what that means, but it sounds awesome in German. So yes, um, get get some stuff. If you, Christine has no clutter in her house or studio. That's extraordinary. You need you need to seek help. I figure a lot of you are clutter. Have some clutter. Everybody has clutter. That's life. It's called what is it called? Uh, entropy, right? Everything moves towards chaos. So anyway, so this Bamboo Mixed Media, we have a few extras that Hanamula has kindly given us to share with you. So if you would be interested in, um, in getting one of these, write to us and tell us that you would. Here is the email address, info at sketchbookschool.com. Unfortunately, this is only available to people in the United States because Hanamula USA is who sponsors us. And if you write to us and tell us why you need a bamboo mixed media pad, and I'm sure you do, tell us why, and make sure you include your mailing address so we know where to mail it to. We can't email you this pad, so please write to us. Do not forget your email address. I mean your mailing address. Okay, got it? Mailing address? Check, 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 check. All right. <sighs> Where is my thing? Um, here it is. All right, so there's some clutter. Got it? You can draw my clutter. Those few of you who don't have clutter, draw some clutter. If you, uh, Charmaine has been enjoying life on this planet for a long time and has accumulated many, much bounty in that time. And that is perfect. So chaos is fun. We eschew perfectionism here. We're not interested in a perfect hospital corner life. We want some chaos. All right, so chaos seems to be resonating with all of you, or many of you. Garrett is almost finished with his sketchbook. Should be finished by Sunday. You better be finished by Sunday, mister. Come on. I've got a railroad to run. Get that done. Get that done. And congratulations, it's true. It's very good. So, all right, so you got some stuff. Let's just let's just dive in. Figure out, like, what am I going to use? There's a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, I think I'm probably going to end up using this. What I'm showing you here, by the way, is a photo of the clutter that I just took. Why am I showing you that? Because I don't want to have another camera in my face while I'm trying to draw. So, I, so this is basically a fairly good representation. It's not quite the angle that I'm seeing things at. So if what I do is a little bit different, that's the reason. 
like that, I immediately have an excuse for why it isn't going to be the way it should be. But I'm going to use my brush pen because, you know, there's, there's always, always looking for a good excuse to use a brush pen. This is... So yeah, so let's just have have a nice relaxing time and draw some junk. Let's make some junk art. Let's turn let's turn the chaos around us and make it seem like it's intentional. Let's celebrate it. Let's celebrate. Let's 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 throw Marie Kondo to the curb and just say, you know what? We're living with chaos. We don't care happy we're happy like hogs in a sty wallowing in our stuff i was reading somewhere this morning about how people was it in the new yorker yeah it was uh about how people are particularly um thinking about all their stuff after being in living through the pandemic that we're all just like oh my god i'm so sick of my stuff i'm around it all the time to look after it. i have to dust it or not um yeah so there's a fair amount of that going on in our lives right now so you're not alone we're all just sick of our stuff sick of it except for you know the young'uns, the new generation, the youths. Why? Because they all live virtual lives. They don't own anything, any physical stuff. They just buy digital things. So they just have sort of lots of files. I don't know. I hate that sort of uh, curmudgeonly, these kids these days with their digital doodads. Why? Why? They don't know what it was like when we had lots of physical possessions. What it was like to have huge shelves full of CDs and big groaning stacks of records. They don't know what it was like when you had a thing called bookshelves. where you had to have actual books that were made of stacks of paper glued together. Why now you just have a phone. I'm sure it's very neatly organized. Because you are living a life of efficiency. And you've got lots of growth hacks that allow you to live a perfectly seamless life. Why am I railing on against the against young people? It's ridiculous. Picky it's not I'm like that too. I've gone through culling the herd of my possessions many times in the last few years in part because I moved. And, when, and you, when you move, you look at all your stuff and you say, you know what, I'm not paying somebody to move this crap. I'm getting rid of it. And uh, so you do. But also we had to move a relative out of her house that she had lived in for a really long time. And uh, we filled a giant dumpster with stuff. And that really, really brought home to me the tyranny of stuff. And I wanted to get Meanwhile, I'm drawing, you know, huge piles of art supplies because art supplies are not junk. Art supplies, I mean, they shouldn't be. You should be using them. Art supplies should be constantly moving through your house as you use them up and go and order more. There should be a, a you know, a, f a whole fleet of Amazon vans at your doorstep loading you up with new stuff to draw with and paint with either oh, look and look yes that's annoying stupid brush pen yeah it's trying to work under pristine conditions now the stupid brush pen has gotten ink on my hands I've been thinking about this importance. I mean, I always think about the importance of art and just making a scene. 
keeping us in balance. I mean, I think about it a lot. It's a it's like a major theme for me because I I credit certainly art making with helping keeping me reasonably in check mentally. Um, but I've also noticed that it seems like like the the world is sort of waking up to that idea a little bit more too. Um, I was listening to the radio this morning while I was um, making coffee, and NPR had a whole story about art as wellness, the healing power of art. And they were talking about um, how for the first time they're doing actual studies of how the sort of, med- med- not medical qualities, but the, the fact that people who have PTSD or various other stress-related disorders um, are getting huge benefits from art, from making art, but they, they weren't really talking about making art. They were talking more about music and um, also going and looking at art and how they uh, had, who was it? Was, I want to say Renee Fleming, is that her name? The opera singer. And they had put her in into an MRI. She's part of this um, study that's going on, studying the therapeutic value of art. And they put her into an MRI and they studied her brain and they had her sing while lying in an MRI machine. You can imagine what that's like. And um, they discovered that there's a... When you're suffering from depression, your brain activity slows, particularly in certain regions. And they, they discover that when you sort of stimulate a person with art or expose them to art, that this changes and that suddenly they are they are getting kind of more blood flow and movement in, in those parts of their brain, which is helping to alleviate their symptoms. And with this opera singer, what was going on was that she... They were noticing the changes in her brain, but they noticed them not when she was actually singing so much as when she was thinking about singing. That's really when it happened. I thought that's really kind of cool. I mean, it's hard to imagine that there's a lot of therapeutic value to singing in an MRI machine. It's a pretty awful place to be under any circumstances, but to try to sing under those circumstances, not so much. But they were talking about... um, they had a, another person who was part of the study was a, a combat veteran who had experienced a lot of PTSD. And um, now just looking at art was able to help him. So, yeah. Lanny, it's not, no, it's not really art therapy. I mean, that is part of it. But this is just about also being just um, exposed to art, just being exposed to it. Um, and here's another thing I would like to recommend to you, which is this new podcast that I've been listening to. Just they've done only done a couple of episodes, but it's produced by the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City, one of the most amazing places on the planet. And um, this podcast is all about the healing effects of art, and they have stories that are often told by the people who are, being, who are the subject of the story. And it's really, I can't remember the name of it, but I'm, what was the name of it? I can't remember it right now. But if you, if you just go and if you're into podcasts and you just go and look for the Metropolitan Museum, you'll see this. They've just done a couple of episodes, it just began. But I've really enjoyed it. It's, it's really nicely produced too. So, all right, I'm done with this dip pen. It's going back in the pile. It's time to pull out some other stuff. Some stuffs. Um, this is a watercolor marker. Windsor Newton. Payne's gray. My favorite markers ever. Partly because it's nice and mushy, but also because it's it is Payne's gray, which is just the most awesome color. (laughs) 
Healing Through Color. Mm, is that the name of it? If you hold on a second, I'll look. Because I was just listening to it yesterday. Um, healing. No, it's Healing Through Color is the name of the episode, but the actual podcast is called Frame of Mind. Frame of Mind. Not the greatest title. Frame of Mind. Do you, do you feel like art has the power to heal you? To alleviate your stress, certainly. But part of the purpose of this study that they're doing is that they want to try, if they can, if they can provide actual scientific scientific um, evidence of the therapeutic value of art, then your insurance company might agree to cover some of your art supply expenses. Honestly, that's what they're, that's what they're going at, is they're saying, you know what, if art is, is therapy, then you know, it should just be like any other medicine that, we, that, that insurance companies cover. How cool would that be? If your doctor prescribes, you know what? I'm going to have to prescribe watercolors to you. You know, I know that's. I know it sounds. There, there are no side effects though. The only side effect might be that you that you have a hankering to use gouache, and I'm going to have to. You know, so come back and talk to me if that's the case, and I'll see. You know, I may need to adjust your prescription and uh, give you some. You know, maybe a, a two to three tubes of gouache just to see how that works. I like that idea. I'm going to have to send you to a specialist. He uh, runs a life drawing class. It's very hard to get an appointment with him, but uh, he's a... We went to art school together, so. <laughs> I like that idea. David Pyle is agreeing that art making, and he says music, dance, and theater, true? Yes, most powerful tool and path from mindfulness and wellness that I know. Absolutely. Absolutely, that's true. Um, but we need scientists and governments and insurance companies to share that perspective. See some of you are sharing resources about this stuff? That's great. Jennifer makes a nice point, which is doing art puts us in the present, which I think is a huge weapon against fear. Fear is crippling. In the present, fear recedes. It's true because fear is about what will happen, what could happen, right? I mean, there are certainly situations where people are suffering fear right now because something terrible is happening to them. I'm thinking, of course, of the people in uh, the Ukraine right now who are, I'm sure, suffering a great deal from fear, and totally justifiably. But generally, anxiety, stress, fear come from the unknown. What could happen sitting there and thinking about what, what will be. A lot of times the things that we fear aren't as bad as the fears that we have about them. I was talking to somebody yesterday who was telling me how she loves every color. She 
she said she was talking about how she wanted to use some color in her art, but she was kind of overwhelmed by the choices because there are so many colors that she loves. And I think that's understandable. Certainly, every color has its place. Every color is, is beautiful. What's less beautiful sometimes is combinations of colors. Put some colors together and you're like, ugh, not so much. It's a little bit about what, what I'm feeling now. You see, remember I said at the beginning, I'm just going to relax. I'm just going to have fun. I'm not going to worry about how things look. I'm just going to enjoy the process. And I am. So I am saying I don't care if some of these colors are not great together. I'm enjoying the feeling of this soft, squidgy, Marker feels really nice on the paper. That's good. I like it. And I'm just kind of looking for places to put a bit of color. It doesn't really matter if it's, a, if it's a mess. I'm drawing clutter. Drawing clutter. Is clutter therapeutic? Sometimes it's certainly you feel good about not having to clean stuff up. But I think possessions can be a weight. They can feel it can feel heavy. Right? You can say, I'm feeling oppressed by my stuff. So maybe not. Maybe certain individual things. I mean, I think in you know, stuff clutter is is the combination of things. It's not the individual things. So, so the individual things might be nice, just like individual colors might be nice, but somehow the accumulation of them is oppressive. You see, um, this paper, being mixed media paper, is fine with wet stuff, and it's fine with markers and things like that. And so I'm just kind of slathering stuff on, but some of this stuff doesn't like being wet, or it's changing when it gets wet. So, um, you know, that's always a concern when you're using watercolor markers, certainly, which are here, like this, this Payne's Gray is... It is watercolor, so it turns into watercolor, sure enough. And uh, see, so you have to kind of think about that. I'm trying to be really good about having two different jars of water when I'm watercoloring these days. I'm tired of having just one jar of brown water. So I'm trying to have be much better about having one jar to clean my brush and one jar to get water on. It seems like a pretty obvious thing to do. You'd think at this point of having done this for many years, I would be good at that. But this is part of my training to be a better person. I keep wanting to go into the clean water, but I won't. Resisting the urge. Trying to be neater and cleaner. It's really hard. I don't know if I'm clumsy or careless. That's probably what it is. I think my whole life, people have been telling me that I'm, I'm always rushing. Not Russian. I'm never Russian, right? Let's not go there. I'm not Russian, but I am rushing. I rush 
and I just and I pay the pay the piper, the speed piper. I pay the consequences for always moving too quickly and having things like this happen. Well, no, actually, nothing bad's happened. I just tried to splatter and try and splatter again. Yeah. Hell, I managed to splatter on my chin. Um, yeah. I was watching, speaking of splattering, I was watching a video of Ralph Steadman the other day. Man, that guy was good at splattering. Do you know Ralph Steadman? I'm sure you do. If you don't, look him up. There's a couple of videos of him drawing on um, on YouTube. And he is just really good at uh, splattering. See, Janice is a very neat painter. She likes to wipe her brush on a cloth before she dunks it. See, yeah, I have a towel here somewhere. But no, that's it's just not happening. Sorry, Janice. It's not happening. Are any of my tools bleeding through the paper? No, they're not. They're not. This paper is holding up really nicely. It, and it feels good. And it's not buckling. It is taking it. I kind of like the way this is looking. Let's see what else I can do with it. Um, all right, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this is going to turn out to be a bad idea or not. But let's see. Something about this color that's calling to me. Danny, use me. Hmm. No, that's not what I had in mind. It needs a bit more. Not quite what I had in mind, but it's okay. I kind of like the way it works with that orange. Winging it, having fun, playing around, seeing what happens. Making art, getting therapy. Yes. I used to go to therapy. You won't be surprised to know that I don't go to therapy anymore. I was cured. But I don't know if it's if it lasted. I had a good therapist, but I don't think she protected me against um, you know random things like global pandemics. She gave me some tools to deal with stuff that happens. She was actually an art therapist too, although we never did art therapy together. But uh, she was helpful to me at a time of need. Honestly, people had said this to me for years, everybody should go to therapy, and I was always like, nah, that's nonsense. But I have to say, I completely agree. There's nothing like sitting around for an hour talking about yourself. Everybody loves that. Everybody does. Even if they won't admit it. What's more fascinating than talking about yourself? I do it for a living now. <laughs> you know, my grandfather wanted to become a psychotherapist. Went to medical school. That was his intention. And actually... So this is in the 1930s. And uh, my grandfather went to Vienna and he met Freud. 
Sigmund Freud used to be a really important guy, kind of less important now, but yeah, so he met Freud. And uh, he bought a photo of Freud. He bought it, like, I don't know, I guess they were, I guess Freud was a really big deal already. And, and there were places you could buy photos of him. I don't know where he got it, but he brought this photo with him and he said to Freud, after meeting him and having a nice chin wag, beard stroking marathon, he asked him if he would sign it. And Freud said, according to my grandfather, Really? I have never been asked before to sign a photo. And so he did sign the photo. And so my grandfather always said, This was the first photo, the first signed photograph of Sigmund Freud. And for many years, that signed photo hung on the wall of my grandfather's office. My grandfather, unfortunately, didn't become a psychotherapist <coughs> because, I don't know, this annoying thing called Nazism happened. And he wasn't able to do it because uh, it was verboten for, for people to do this anymore. So anyway, he had this Zine photo. And then my grandfather went to the big waiting room in the sky. And I inherited that photo. I have it. It's in a closet behind me. And, uh, yeah. It's apparently the first signed photo of Sigmund Freud, sitting in a, sitting in a an envelope. It's a big picture. It's like an eight by ten glossy. Sigmund looking buff. So yeah. So it's sitting there in a closet in Phoenix, Arizona. First ever picture. How Freud would have felt about art therapy. I think he wouldn't have had any interest in it. He would have been like, I just think it's nonsense. I could be wrong. Are there any therapists out there who know anything about this? Could answer the question. <laughs> Charmaine wants to know if we'll draw Freud. And my wife claims that uh, the picture is clutter. It's not clutter. It is in a place of honor. So, yes. Therapists get paid for giving people meds. My therapist never gave me any meds. She had in some ways. No, I don't. I'm not a meds person. No, I, my, therapist, my therapist gave me a lot of great ideas. She didn't give me meds. She was, she was a Freudian, actually. My therapist was a Freudian. Not a strict Freudian. Freud adjacent. So are you drawing my clutter or are you drawing your own clutter? How's it coming? Freud wasn't a fan of hypnosis. Really? That's interesting. I didn't know that. I, I sort of assumed that that was part of the whole kind of early 20th century deal. It was a lot of hypnotherapy stuff. All right, so this kind of looks like an explosion of art supplies. I'm pretty happy with it. I could keep going to the point that I ruin it. But I've enjoyed this experience. I've enjoyed talking to you about it. And, uh, yeah. It's true. My wife points out that I selected my therapist from the phone book. It wasn't the phone book, actually. It was the book that the insurance company had. So I was like, okay, who's the nearest therapist who is covered by my insurance company? So I don't have to pay much money. and I don't have to make much effort. But she was great. Just goes to show you. Throw 
a dart at the phone book, and you can actually come up with a pretty good Freudian. I mean, Freud did. Freud wrote a book about about Da Vinci. He did. He did. He did some art uh, analysis. He wrote a book about about um, dreams and like vulture symbols or something like that in in maternal inf- evidence of maternal influences and in, I don't I don't remember it exactly. I read it a long time ago. So yes, all right. I think I'm getting I'm ready to take a break from all this feeling good. All right, I'm gonna turn this off and come back to me. Here I am. But I like this. I think I'm not sure if you can if I if the camera did it justice. It has a good energy. Explosion. Um, all right, so what do you think? Um, I hope you had a relaxing time. I hope you didn't beat yourself up at all. I hope you didn't say, ugh, I have all this clutter in my house. It's terrible. I don't know. Wilma says, psychiatrists do meds. Psychologists with PhDs who talk therapy. Yeah, that's actually what my therapist was. She was a psychologist. And if, she, and if you like went nuts and you needed medicine she would call a doctor and they would give it to you so yeah anyway that's enough about my personal medical history it's really none of your business um all right so would you like this book want it not this particular one because i'm going to continue like because i like this paper a lot but if you would like it um yeah send us Send us a notification of your desires. Info at sketchbookschool.com. Send us your mailing address. Don't forget that. Um, what else? Speaking of therapy, John Muir Laws and I do this podcast every week. And I find it therapeutic to sit and have a nice conversation about art, creativity, nature, science. He knows a lot about the brain and chemistry. So every week we record this conversation that we do. And it's called the Art for All podcast. Have, are you listening to it? Or am I just talking to myself when I make it? I hope you're listening to it. I hope you subscribe wherever you get podcasts. One of the places you can get the podcast is here on YouTube. Speaking of YouTube, I... I Draw With Me has been appearing on Facebook as well as on YouTube, on my personal channel as well as on the Sketchbook Schools channel. I'm kind of thinking that I might stop doing that. I might just do it on YouTube, on the Sketchbook School channel. If you care about that, let me know. So the Art for All podcast. By the way, if, you're, if you are an enthusiast of the podcast, you can write to us. Set up a special email address, podcast at sketchbookschool.com. I don't have it up here, but but we will be announcing it again in the future. Podcast at sketchbookschool.com. So if you have a question for me and and or Jack, John Law John Muir Laws, uh, you can write to us and we will read it to ourselves. And if we are interested in it as a topic, maybe we'll talk about it. So yeah. I'm glad that FZ likes it. See, that's the kind of enthusiasm I yearned for and i'm finally getting it scott also an enthusiast marcia is an enthusiast when is the next one every monday every monday every monday for three months now we've been doing it every single monday so the fact that you've asked means that possibly you haven't been listening but it sounds like a hopeful holler makes holler that's a heck of a name i like that i have no idea what it means hopeful holler makes holler I'm just kind of rendered speechless. Wilma listens to it while walking 30 minutes at a time. Yes. We're trying to encourage people to, to walk more, so we are making the podcast longer and longer. It's kind of like a an exercise program. We started out short, and now we keep getting longer and longer. So eventually you'll be walking like marathons. It's really, That's really subtext. 
So yes, Sang Sub is learning. Sang Sub, Sang Sub is uh, our friend in South Korea, and he is learning English from the podcast. It makes me nervous a little bit, but we both speak English pretty well. So hopefully that will be helpful to you. I'm glad to know that some people, are you listening to this, JJ? Some people like the podcast. So good. I'm glad that you do. Um, excellent. Well, thank you. Thanks all for liking it and continue listening to it. We have done some interesting topics of late and they keep getting more interesting. So thanks for joining us. Um, what else? My essays. I have to say my essays are actually the thing that I want to be doing more than anything, more than doing the podcast, more than doing Draw With Me. I want to write these essays. And I do like writing them. I wrote a long one yesterday. So I write them. And I release them on Friday and on Tuesday, if you'd like. I write, I write a different one on Tuesday for those people who are interested. But generally, I write one every Friday. If you haven't subscribed re recently or ever, please do. Even if you never read them. No, I want you to read them. That's why I write them. But that's really the thing. I think that's mo more and more as I'm getting on in years, I realize like that's more than anything. That's what I want to do. I want to be a writer, which is weird because I am a writer and I have been a writer for a long time, but that's really more than anything. That's what I like. Garrett likes them. Thank you. Thank you, Garrett. And uh, some of you others like them too. So that's good. I'm glad that you like them. And um, that means that you're subscribed. Cynthia wants to draw Freud. Maybe I'll haul out that picture and show it to you. Show you the signature. That would be nice. So, uh, yes. You can sign up for them at dannysessays.com. Finally, of course, subscribe to this channel. That's If you're on YouTube, subscribe to it. Subscribe to it. Um, the podcast comes out on Mondays. I, I'm taking a brief break from doing my Friday video essays just because it's enough already. I'm tired of imposing myself on you on a daily basis. Monday, the podcast. Tuesday, the essay. Thursday, draw with me. Friday, another essay. It's, I'm, I'm sickening myself. It's enough of me. So we're not going to do that. I will. I'll come back to doing it, but no. Oh, boy. Janice wants me to start doing comics now. I did comics for a while. Little comics. Yeah, so I'm going to take Vero Veronica's suggestion and take a break. I'll take a break from all of it. No, I'm not going to. Sangsub wants me to do a book. Yes, I'd like to do a book. It's going to take a little bit of effort, and I think I'm going to publish it myself if I do. I'm just kind of tired of the publishing world. Wilma wants me to sell the Freud signature and buy something I love and display. What would my grandfather think? I'd need to go to a therapist to deal with that, wouldn't I? The guilt that came from that. And Thistle just wants to draw with me. She doesn't care about all the rest of the junk. I agree. We all have the bits that we like. And my wife is going to make sure that I keep doing draw with me. So, yeah, my grandfather is dead. How could you be so blunt? Wilma, you never cease to amaze me with your bluntness, but uh, you're a librarian, so there we go. All right, so if you want my collected essays book, first of all, you got to subscribe to this regular thing. you got, you got to re read them on the, on the reg to see. But I think I will, I want to do it. I'd like to do it because I have so many. I've been writing, so I started blogging in 2003, if you can believe it. And I started writing a long time before that, so... Yeah, I have, a, I, have a, I have a lot of stuff that I could make into a book. All right, you people seem to me, want me to do Freud. Mm. Very interesting. And why are you so interested in drawing Sigmund Freud? Mm. All right, let's, we'll, do, we'll try and do Freud. Maybe we'll do it next week. We'll see. And um, when we do, I want you to tell me about the dreams you've been having this week. 
I've been having, I have dreams. I have a dream. <coughs> All right. So, yes. I, my grandfather, by the way, looks a lot like Freud. You'll see, I'll show you a picture of my grandfather next to the picture of Freud. He kind of put on the Freud thing. Smoked cigars, had a little beard, did the whole thing. I'll show you. Being like Freud-like was a thing in those days, so he did it. But um, yeah, all right. Well, thank you. Thanks for uh, another wasting, not wasting, spending another time with me. I mean, this was cheaper than therapy, right? We spent an hour, and um, was Freud already a subject in abstract? No, no, that wasn't Freud. That was an artist. Was it? It was one of the founders of um, of of uh, Cubism, right? It was Brock. Brock. Um, thank you, thank you all for uh, for encouraging me. Just when I was trying to take a break, you people, I get in trouble for saying you people. Apparently, that's not a thing that you're supposed to say. You guys, y'all. I'm going to start saying y'all. So, all right. Well, thank you for... I can't wait to see your clutter. I can't wait to clutter up my screen with your clutter next week. So send me some clutter, and then we'll analyze it with the assistance of my grandfather and Sig Sigmund Freud. And uh, Einstein. Lisa wants to draw Einstein. That could be fun, too. That could be fun, too. And uh, thank you all for joining me. Thank you all for drawing with me all. And I will see you. I'll see you next time. Next Thursday. Bye, y'all. Thanks for drawing with me today. We'd love to see what you made. So please post it on social media or put it in the Sketchbook School schoolyard and make sure to tag it. Hashtag SBS draw with me. Thanks very much to our sponsors, Hanamula and Windsor and & Newton. And if you'd like some more inspiration for your creativity, here are three things that you can do. One, subscribe to this channel, and you'll know when I make new videos, which I do every week. Two, sign up for my free weekly newsletter. A lot of people seem to like it, maybe because it's free. And third, watch another video.